Hi, you're watching the Virtual Strategy Magazine video podcast, and we're here live in Las Vegas with Simon Crosby of Citrix, and we're here to talk about a few announcements they had, as well as the Microsoft Get Virtual Now conference that was last week, where Citrix played a big part in it. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about. Great to be with you again, uh, Brian. Um, gosh, things are going from you know from, from uh, big to bigger, um, big to huge. So last week with Microsoft, uh, we were on stage as they announced their Get Virtual um, program. Really, this is Hyper-V going to market, and Hyper-V um, really needs a, an ecosystem of vendors around it. Citrix is one of those vendors we've been part partnered with Microsoft in virtualization for quite a while, um, collaborating in the development of, of components for Hyper-V. So all the Linux interconnector kit and all of that stuff was built by Citrix. That's part of really trying to get fast, free, compatible, ubiquitous virtualization going. Um, and then really from a go-to-market perspective, we're absolutely partnered with Microsoft in, um, in desktop virtualization with VDI. Uh, our product there is in desktop. Microsoft uh, Field recommends it as their preferred uh, virtual desktop infrastructure. And that business is, is like a rocket ship. So Zen Desktop was launched in May, I think, May 20th. And uh, it's been tremendously successful. So um, Microsoft is really amplifying that message for us because Zen Desktop runs superbly on Hyper-V. It runs superbly on Zen Server, which is just a built-in capability of it. It also runs very well on VMware, of course, um, as every one of our premium features does. So um, that's very exciting. And you also had two new announcements that came out today, right? Indeed, by comparison with VMware's eight. So at least I can remember what they're about. <laughs> Here's what they are. We announced Zen Server 5, which is the fifth release of uh, our enterprise virtualization platform, uh, Zen Server. We're the only alternative to VMware. Uh, as, an, as an OS independent virtual infrastructure layer um, that is guest agnostic, offers high, high, high performance, incredible ease of use, and an open architecture with built-in high availability, both for VMs and for management. And um, you know, and direct plugins that allow you to extend it to fault tolerance and so on. The Zen server is going uh, itself like a rocket ship. Uh, we're still doubling the business quarter over quarter. Um, Four thousand odd channel partners certified and trained now, and large enterprise deals starting to come our way. And it's very interesting to see why. I, I have this sense that you know, VMware's had a couple of unfortunate moments recently. You know, they 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 tripped, and I'm sure we will do someday too. Uh, but it's been kind of fun. Um, and uh, as a result, large enterprises are saying that they want to double source. They want to have dual sources. Um, those, most of those seem to be convinced that they want virtualization outside an OS. Uh, they don't see any OS integrated virtualizations being ready for enterprise deployment yet. And so suddenly, the lights went on. And Zen Server is going great guns. So we're very, very pleased with it. The second announcement we made today was... Um, the announcement of actually a new Citrix product portfolio called C3, Citrix Cloud Center, which is designed to allow infrastructure IT service providers and Web 2.0 and SaaS providers to adopt the core Citrix Delivery Center components to take them down a path of delivering enterprise class IT infrastructure services for their customers, which are traditional Citrix customers. And so that portfolio is composed of the following products. Uh, Zen Server with a new edition called the Cloud Edition, and uh, Zen Server Cloud Edition has a so a cool you know a few bells and whistles which we'll talk about in a minute. But one of the key innovations there is a consumption-based pricing model, which allows our customers to pay us based on the number of VMs that they resell to their customers. Um, it's got Netscaler, and Netscaler is already uh, delivers about 75% of internet transactions daily as the front end of eBay. You know, Amazon, Google, Yahoo, and so on. Um, and then WAN Scaler, which is a WAN optimization uh, link between enterprises and clouds. So if you're moving VMs up and down between the enterprise and the cloud, you really want some WAN optimization in there. And Workflow Studio, which is our capability that allows you to integrate all this stuff, orchestrate it, and combine it with other capabilities in, in the enterprise. And so Citrix Cloud Center has already been. Uh, deployed by several clouds. We announced it with various customers and we announced it with several ISV partners who are building the the end-to-end -end management experience between the, the owned enterprise IT data center 
and the virtual private data center in the cloud. Uh, three terabit uh, is a very good example of a, of a vendor that's done some tremendous innovation in that area. And um, I think they had an announcement today as well about right. a partnership with you guys. That's right. So three terabits. But so the key thing there is that you know we're always open to having great innovative ISV partners around us. There's a limit to what we can do, and they seem to be doing a great job of, of delivering this stuff to market. Platform computing is another OEM in that category. We've had some large cloud wins with them recently. Uh, and really, they came out of the grid world with all the stuff you know, that you would need to really scale out VM deployments on, on a very large scale. So, very, very exciting show for us. So, who do you see as the biggest consumer for your cloud edition? Um, it turns out that Zen is just about everywhere in clouds, mostly because it's open source and because it's in Linux. Right. A lot of those folks have come to us and said they wanted to offer more services to their customers. Primary uh, among those was Windows, and we do a fabulous job of Windows optimization, but they also want to opt offer HA and various other you know, higher end enterprise services uh, as, a, as virtualized IT infrastructure services. They wanted to be able to get services delivered with an SLA end to end to the customer, which is where WAN scaler and NetScaler fit in, and so we had a bunch of stuff we could throw at that. Um, and so, objective one is to kind of deepen the strategic relationship that we had with folks who are using NetScaler today. Um, and two was to allow the users of open source Zen or distro Zen to actually come home to where all the innovation is happening around Zen. And um, so that's been very, very successful. There is a, already a, a coupling between those portfolio products, which is quite profound. Um, and that is that NetScaler today can drive a fully automated infrastructure. So, you know, Netscape will sit and measure the transaction times for all these different VMs and applications. If a particular VM is in trouble, then Netscaler will automatically talk to provisioning server via workflow to have a new VM thrown up to continue to serve the workload. We do this to throw up new VMs on hypervisors and on bare metal, and we have an ability to bring servers up from cold, power them up, add them to resource pools, and power them down again, which is very green. So Netscaler has a very, very interesting role there as our dynamic data center you know, delivery engine. Um, and I see that in stark contrast to the VMware announcements today around a you know, data center OS, which I don't get, I, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I'm not the smartest guy around, but I don't get this one. Um, any architecture that's based on a single point of failure that lives in the management domain is not an OS. Uh, it seems they're extending a little, a little far. But uh, there you go. Maybe they've done a bunch of innovation in the last few months that I haven't, haven't noticed. We'll see. I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I'm looking forward to, to seeing what they're doing. Yeah. Now, uh, you might see this coming, but there's been a lot of speculation in the press lately about the that Microsoft might buy Citrix. Do you think, hypothetically, if that were to happen, would that be a good thing for Citrix? Oh, gosh. You know, first of all, we never, we never speculate on those things. Um, you know, I, the virtualization world is hot enough now that everybody's speculating on who's going to buy whom, sure. and, and we never make comments. Um, you know, we're a great, great partner of Microsoft. Microsoft makes a ton of money out of what we do, and you know, they give us scale, and we give them advanced feature sets. That's kind of exactly what we do in, in virtualization today. Uh, we extend Hyper-V, and you know, Zen Server extends some of the use cases for Hyper-V, and of course Zen Desktop is the desktop delivery mechanism of choice for, uh, for virtual desktops and Microsoft. Well, Simon, it's a, as always, it's a pleasure to speak with you and uh, look forward to seeing a lot of things here at VMworld. And, uh, it's going to be fun. Have a great show. All right. Nice talking with you. Thanks, Brian.